As mayor of the city of Stanton, I called this special called public hearing to order on October 29th, 2020. Vice Mayor Robinson, it's my understanding that you have a motion. I do. Madam Mayor, I move that Morgan Smith be appointed as acting clerk of council for the recordation of the proceedings of council in its special called meeting of October 29th, 2020, and that she be authorized and directed to sign and execute such documents as are necessary and proper regarding the presence of council members, a quorum, consideration, and voting. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor. All right, um, council member Holmes, a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Smith, please call the roll. Mayor Oaks. Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Mr. Flappy. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Dole. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. As mayor, I call this meeting of Stanton City Council to order. I know that the meeting is being broadcast over the city's cable channel and streamlined on the city's website so that members of the public may hear our meeting. The meeting is also being recorded. I ask the clerk of council to call the roll for confirmation of those council members present for today's meeting. Vice Mayor Robertson. Aye. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Ms. Dole. Aye. Mr. Holmes. Aye. Ms. Mead. Aye. Mayor Oaks. Aye. All members are present. Thank you. I ask the city manager, Steve Rosenberg, to please note the participation of any city officials or colleagues or anyone else during today's meeting by Zoom or telephone. Madam Mayor, Council Members Dole and Mead are participating on the Zoom platform. All other city officials are, who are participating are present in chambers. All right, thank you. Please let me mention that notice reasonable under the circumstances of this meeting has been given to the public contemporaneously with the notice provided to members of City Council. In addition to limited public seating in City Hall, access to this meeting has been provided to the public by audio feed on the City's cable channel and the City's website. During the public hearing, public comments will be taken in person and by telephone. Members of the public who wish to participate in the public hearing by telephone may call 844-854 2222. And when prompted, enter the access code 619-358 hashtag. Callers will be recognized in order. The public is reminded that a public hearing is a time for counsel simply to listen to your comments. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes, though each speaker is encouraged to be brief in his or her comments. We would ask that you try to keep it at three minutes if it ever so possible. Detailed instructions for the public participation by telephone have been publicized over the course of the past week on the city's website and Facebook page and can be found now on the council's website at www.ci.stanton.va.us backslash government backslash city dash council. Also, let me highlight and have reflected in the meeting minutes that this meeting, although being conducted in person, is also being conducted by Zoom with the virtual participation of certain members of City Council, given the catastrophic nature of the declared emergency and disaster related to the COVID-19 outbreak, which as part of the total circumstances makes it impractical or unsafe to assemble in a single location. The meeting is being held consistent with the City Council Ordinance 2020-4 regarding continuity of government, a copy of which can be found online at www.stanton.va.us backslash COGORD 2020-04 as extended by City Council's ordinance number 2020-24. All right, with that said, I just wanted to make a few comments. Um, the City Council's intention tonight is to simply have a public hearing in order to listen to the citizens in relation to the Second Amendment issue. Um, we ask that you 
keep your comments directed to uh, the reason for the public hearing, which again is the Second Amendment issue. We will um, take calls and we will also um, have people from the audience speak. But what we're going to do is we're going to alternate. We're going to allow uh, the first uh, person to speak will be in person. And then uh, when that person's finished, we'll immediately take a Zoom call and we're gonna ask the next person to come to the podium and just stand and wait. Um, and then as soon as the Zoom call is finished, we will then um, go back to the podium. We're gonna alternate. Uh, the flow will save us some time. Um, we will ask that um, folks allow people from Stanton to potentially speak first. Now we know that the logistics of this might be difficult and we're not going to turn anyone away. Also, uh, please wear your mask at all times, except when you come to the microphone. If you uh, care to remove your mask, you may. We do have uh, sanitizing wipes that you can wipe the podium down with before and after, um, if you care to do so. Also, again, our intention tonight is to simply listen and not to take any action because we have a uh, special access available um, and that's going to be available through tomorrow where folks can uh, send in uh, emails and phone calls. We as a council will need to go through all of the emails and listen to all the phone calls. Also, uh, taking into mind with what's been said tonight, um, compiling all that information and then making the best decision for the city of Stanton. So again, our intention tonight is to simply listen to you, the public. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, we allow five minutes, but if you could keep it at three minutes, uh, we would appreciate it just because, um, you know, we all might be here for a while otherwise, but you are allowed the five minutes. We will not deny you the right to speak at the time in which allotted. When speaking, please direct your comments to the council as a whole, and please refrain from speaking about one individual council member. Um, we would prefer that uh, the council be dressed addressed as a body of government. Let me see. All right, I think that's everything. Um, I will um, start by banging the gavel and that will open the public hearing, whether you are for or against the issue at hand. Um, either way, feel free to come up and speak when directed by the fire marshal. Uh, we want to be mindful of the limitations that are set uh, by the governor's office. So uh, we have um, some staff that are more than happy to help you out. And again, we will alternate. So with that, the public hearing is now open. Our first speaker may approach the microphone. Please state your name and your address. My name is Jason Bailey. My wife and I live at 933 Donaghy Street, and we are residents of Stanton since 2011. Thank you, City Council, for giving us the opportunity to speak tonight. I appreciate it, and I know many residents of Stanton appreciate it as well. I would offer the Council simply two points of consideration as they uh, consider the Second Amendment issue. The first is constitutional, and the second regards the grounds on which the recent gun control laws were passed in Richmond. The Constitution of both the United States and the Constitution of Virginia guarantee the rights of, uh, of the citizens to keep and bear arms and that it shall not be infringed. And so I would simply note just one of the laws, and I think this could apply to all of them, but this is a simple way to point out, make my point. The one handgun a month law by its very nature does restrict the ability of a citizen to keep and bear arms. Now we might argue about whether or not someone might actually need to purchase more than one handgun a month. However, that's beside the point because the question is not need, the question is what are we guaranteed under the Constitution of both Virginia and the United States? My second point is simply a question of legitimacy. My argument could stand on constitutional grounds alone. However, the proponents of the recent gun control legislation did not base their arguments on the Constitution. Governor Northam stated on one occasion that we lose, quote, too many Virginians to gun violence. And many of the arguments in favor of the recent legislation were based on 
public safety or personal safety and emotion. So tonight you might hear a lot of appealing to emotion and perhaps even from folks who have tragically lost loved ones to gun violence. However, if, if COVID-19 has taught us anything, it is that we ought to follow the data and we ought to follow the science. So I'd point you to the Virginia Department of Health, 2018, similar years hold similar data. In 2018, there were 1,667 emergency room visits because of a gun injury. In 2018, there were 1,036 actual gun-related deaths in Virginia. And I'd remind the council at this point that there are 8.5 million citizens living in Virginia. Of those 1,036 actual gun-related deaths, two-thirds were suicides. And only one-third, 342 people, were actually killed by someone else with a gun. I would remind the council that the arguments put forth in favor of the recent gun control legislation were arguments based on public safety and carried the narrative that there was in fact an epidemic of gun violence in Virginia. For those of you who are good at math, you know that 342 people out of 8.5 million is 0.00004%, which means that the General Assembly predicated the passage of the recent legislation on gun control because of the effects on one hundred four one hundred thousandths of one percent of the population of Virginia. So for the sake of 0.00004%, the General Assembly infringed on the rights of 8.5 million people. Some might disagree with me that that makes this an illegitimate or excuse me, I, I would argue that this makes this an illegitimate imposition on our rights. Some might disagree with me on that. So on these both, both constitutional grounds and the grounds of the science and the data, I would ask that the Stanton City Council make Stanton a Second Amendment sanctuary city to protect its citizens from both unconstitutional and illegitimate laws. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, the next person can come up to the microphone, but we're gonna take a caller, Mr. Rosenberg. Is the caller whose number ends in 5-8 on the line? Yes, hello. Um, my name is Julie Schofield. I live here in the city of Stanton. And unlike the previous speaker, I'm strongly opposed to city council taking any action related to sanctuary QA issues. I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. <clears throat> I'm also a strong supporter of the laws of the federal government, and I'm a strong supporter of the laws passed by the state of Virginia. If there are issues related to the laws that have recently been passed by the state of Virginia, then it's up to the courts to decide whether they stand the test of constitutionality. It is completely out of the purview of the city council of Stanton to take any action in this regard. I also think, frankly, it is the height of your responsibility to be holding a public hearing and inviting people to come into a closed space in city council chambers in the midst of a pandemic. It clearly cannot be made safe. We know that COVID is spread by aerosol and by droplets, and even with masks, people sitting in a closed space for a, a lengthy period of time could be very vulnerable. My other concern is that this issue related to Sanctuary 2A is diverting the attention of the City Council from issues that they do have purview over, issues that they could be working on in our community. We've suffered devastating floods. We have friends and neighbors and businesses that really need some assistance right now. We have issues related to the pandemic and how we're going to recover economically as time goes on. And frankly, we have a lot of concern right now about the ongoing spread of COVID in our community. These are the issues that I think the city council should be discussing. We also have example day after day of racial injustice in our community. This is another issue that should be at the top of the agenda. And I frankly find it the height of your responsibility 
for the city council to be spending time on issues over which they have no legitimate purview. I support, as I said, the laws of the land as they currently exist. But I also know that we need reasonable, sane, safe gun laws in our country to protect people. We have suicide rates among veterans, and we know that places that allow more guns have more suicide. We know that people are really challenged right now, particularly in this environment with mental health challenges, and we know that guns are not safe in the hands of people with mental health issues. So we have many issues to be concerned about other than protecting or deciding that the city council, which has no purview over this issue, should be saying anything related to a sanctuary QA resolution. It's completely meaningless, and I'm strongly opposed to this city council taking any action in support of a sanctuary QA resolution. Thanks for your time. Thank you. If you'll Good say evening. your name. David Herman, 824 Fisher Circle. Um, Good evening, Mayor Oaks and the rest of the city council. I'm here to support this amendment, obviously, or movement. This was originally started by the Virginia Civil Defense League, and it was itself was started to support the gun rights of everyone in the Commonwealth of Virginia and beyond Virginia. There are 200 plus localities in the state now, cities, towns, counties, who are sanctuary cities or towns or councils. I'm not going to go into the rhymes and reasons for all of what I think. I did that last time we were here. No point in beating a dead horse. I just want to support the city of Stanton in supporting this resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. If the next person can come to the podium and Mr. Rosenberg. This is the caller whose number ends in 99 on the line. Is the caller whose number ends in 99 on the line? Let's move to the next caller, please. Is the caller whose number ends in 32 on the line? Yes. Please state your name. My name is Glenn Patterson. I have lived in the city of Stanton for more than 70 years and currently reside on Churchville Avenue. I am most interested in the fact that the complete statement about gun laws includes the statement in order to maintain a well-regulated militia. I believe we have two in the city of Stanton, in the police department and the sheriff's department. A third, if we need it, if we need to call in special help from our Augusta County forces. I find the whole idea of guns in our downtown area to be reprehensible. If my wife and I would walk into a business and someone has an open carry gun, we will leave that business. And I don't think we will go back to that business because choices have consequences and the question of guns has economic consequences. Thank you for your time and listening. Thank you. You may, you may speak. All right. Okay. Thank you, uh, members of council. Uh, my name is Zach Bell. I live over off the Spring Hill Road in here in Stanton. I lived in Stanton for over 20 years. Um, I just wanted to bring, can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to bring something uh, to light that might pertain to all of this. Uh, just something I wanted to mention. Uh, it's something that has been brought to my attention when I have conversation with, with friends and, and members of the public. Uh, is the optics of this whole thing, how it looks uh, for potential restrictions with the Second Amendment, whether for or against it, it, it looks like it's it's to treat responsible, safe, and respectful firearm owners um, the way they're being treated. These are people that I know, inclu including myself and many people I know, overwhelming majority of firearm owners are uh, law-abiding, peaceful, productive citizens. 
uh, most of which have been either involved in gun safety classes or hunting safety courses as children or adults, everything in between. They follow the law, they respect law enforcement. Uh, they often subscribe to magazines, online forums that keep them updated on the laws. These people are people that want to know what is the right thing to do. How can I obey the law? How can I be a good citizen? Um, another thing is, if these people are, are responsible like this, um, I, I don't know why they're being treated like reckless children. Uh, it's one argument that has come up a lot with this 2A business is that the founders intended the guns of their time. I've heard that a lot. People say, oh, they're talking about muskets. Well, I mean, you don't have to read very far in history to know that that's just not, it was never contingent on firearms technology. Um, repeating arms have been around since the 16th century. Now, this has not been mass produced. We're looking at an artisan industry back then. Most people made things by hand. Um, but you have things, the Danish flintlocks, 30 capacity magazine, 1646. Uh, the Ferguson rifle, 1770. Patrick Ferguson shot, so, you know, six to seven shots. The Puppel gun was another automatic gun in England. Um, my point being that I don't believe that the founders and Continental Congress and all this, I don't think they meant they were not trying to say the gun of this time. They were saying the right for somebody to defend themselves with means necessary to them. So I don't think they're, they're thinking in the future that, you know, this is just going to be a musket forever. They, they knew that the guns that we have today, yes, they are dangerous. They are, they are automatic, whatever you want to call it. Those repeating arms were around in 1791. And they knew all about them. So uh, the right to keep and bear arms, that's been said before here. Uh, I think it's one of the easiest concepts to understand, leaving no room, if any, for misinterpretation. Um, and that's uh, all I really have to say. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Would the caller whose number ends in 02 please state your name and address and address your comments to council? Hi, my name is Darlene Schneck, and I live at 1410 North Colton Street, apartment 204 in Stanton. Madam Mayor and members of council, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I'm not really sure why we are talking about this topic today. The, the fact is our country is awash in guns. There are more guns than people in America. 40,000 Americans lose their lives to guns each year. The majority of Virginia citizens support the common sense gun regulations passed by our General Assembly, which balance the right to people to own firearms with the right of all to life and happiness. Our local leaders and our public safety personnel are sworn to abide by the laws enacted by our Commonwealth. Passing local ordinances that conflict with state laws is simply not legal. Therefore, I do not support a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution for Stanton. Doing this would give cover to those who preach insurrection against the government. We only have to look at the recent threat to our own governor to know that armed militias and white supremacists are a threat to public safety. Do not give them a reason to harbor here in Stanton. And do not tarnish our town's reputation as a welcoming place for all people. Let's focus on topics that we can truly solve at the local level that desperately need our attention. Thank you. Thank you. And you can put that wipe in the little cubby <laughs> if you haven't already. So thank you. All right, you may speak. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Fritz Fairfield. I live at 118 Thorn Rose Avenue, Stanton. I don't have a gun. I don't want a gun. I don't need a gun. I don't know a thing about guns. But I do know, however, 
that our prior city council and mayor, Dull, did not allow this 2A topic to be on the agenda. I want to thank you, the new Mayor Oaks and the new council members, for allowing these folks to come and speak this evening. Please don't judge these people into a certain category. And I'd like to quote from a member of the House of Lords in the United Kingdom. Don't be quick to judge others, especially if your perspective of life is clouded by anger, jealousy, negativity, or unfilled desires. Judging a person does not define who they are. It defines who you are. Thank you. Thank you for having this um, hearing today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Would the caller whose number ends in 64 please state your name and full address? This is Dr. Mary Miller at 471 Albemarle Avenue. Um, I think that we should enforce the laws of Virginia. Um, and as far as guns, I think that um, Stanton has a well trained police department. Stanton police officers are, are armed and they're trained to use their guns. We, the people of Stanton, I believe, are well protected. There is an unfounded fear that someone, I don't know who that someone is, but someone is going to take your guns away. Through June, there have been 587,107 background checks in Virginia through June of this year. More than one firearm can be purchased by each background check. There have been more than 2 million firearm purchases in the United States this year. There are more than 393 million civilian-owned firearms in the United States. No one knows how many firearms are acquired through private gun sales, gun shows, or theft. The average gun-owning household owns nearly eight guns. Many firearms are bought by first-time buyers, and nearly one half of them are totally unfamiliar with firearms. How can people with firearms and no training ensure safety for themselves and others? Experienced alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and SWAT team uh, special weapons and tactics team members believe that the gun does not solve the problem. In fact, they ask, how do we avoid gun fire? Isn't it better to de-escalate a situation than to shoot? Isn't that how the Stanton police have been trained and are best able to protect us? Firearms are used to kill, and not all killing is by bad people. Suicide is more common than homicide. Most suicides are committed with firearms in rural communities by older white men. 22 of our veterans commit suicide every day, more than 70% with guns. Let's protect those who have fought to protect, who have fought to protect us, for so they too are loved. And let's think about unreasoning allegiance to guns and trust our Stanton police. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Randolph Burton. I live at 211 Hendron Avenue. Members of City Council, thank you for taking my comments. You have asked for public input on the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, admittedly a pretty broad topic, but I'm here to oblige. While I support the Second Amendment, I recognize that the right to bear arms is not unlimited as confirmed in the 2008 landmark case of District of Columbia versus Heller. Just as my right to freedom of speech has limits, I can't stand up here and slander you all or use speech to incite a riot. Each of you has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of Virginia. 
I don't necessarily like or agree with all of the laws, but I don't get to pick and choose which ones I have to follow. Likewise, you don't get to decide which ones apply to the citizens of Stanton and which ones do not. While it is true that you have the power to create laws in the form of ordinances, I imagine you are all aware that any local ordinance that covers the same violation as a state law may only be enacted if it carries a greater penalty. That is, you cannot effectively lessen or void state laws by setting lesser or no penalties. On the other hand, you cannot enact ordinances that are too restrictive either. You may not abridge our constitutional rights. Under Section 11 of the Stanton City Code, you have an enumerated power to, quote, regulate the exhibition of fireworks, the discharge of firearms, and the making of bonfires in the streets and yards. And under that authority, Stanton City Council enacted Ordinance 6.05.070. It shall be unlawful for any person within the corporate limits of the city to shoot at or kill by use of a firearm, any bird or animal. In case of a nuisance from birds or animals, they may be shot under the supervision of the police department upon permission of the city manager or designee. I have no quarrel with the city on that score. Recently, the Virginia State Legislature passed laws requiring background checks for the sale of firearms which will go into effect in July of 2021 and will therefore apply here in Stanton as well. Personally, I am in favor of reasonable background checks on the sale of firearms. I can't guarantee, but I hope that these requirements will make all of our communities safer. But my personal opinion is beside the point. If I go to a dealer and purchase a firearm, I must undergo a background check. Similarly, whether this council believes that background checks are useful or not, or too intrusive, you can't decide that Stanton is a sanctuary where these requirements simply don't apply. To all my fellow citizens who find these restrictions too burdensome, you should address your concerns to the state legislature. Our council members only have the power to enact ordinances to set penalties that are more restrictive and not less. One of the blessings of this country has been its emphasis on the rule of law. We have well-defined processes for passing laws, enforcing laws, and even challenging laws, but not ignoring laws. It is a system that has served us reasonably well for almost 250 years, but it only works when we abide by it, by its responsibilities as well as its restrictions. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I thank you for listening to what each of us has to say. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Would the caller whose number ends in 61 please state your name and full address? Is the caller whose number ends in 61 on the line? Let's go to the next caller, please. Is the caller whose number ends in 57 on the line? Yes, my name is Karima Anderson, and I'd like to wish Madam Mayor and the members of City Council a good evening. Would you please? I live at 100 Smithley Circle. Hello? Yes, thank you. I was going to ask you to provide your address. Can everyone hear me? I live at 100 Smithley Circle here in Stanton, Virginia. I want my voice to counter the voices of those who are attending this ill-advised meeting this evening to use our city as a platform for airing views and grievances on a national hot-button issue 
bearing little relation to our daily lives as Santonians. I want to concern about the council's decision to call for a large public gathering indoors during a pandemic. I also question the timing involved with calling this meeting. Our country is five days most contentious election of our lifetime. Tempers are frayed and the citizens the edge. Call meeting about guns five days prior to a national election seems calculated to cause the most possible harm to our city and its residents. With our city suffering lost revenue due to the COVID virus, I also question the council's decision to command resources in order to hold such an unnecessary meeting, given the extraordinary required under COVID protocol. I ask you, City Council members, what is the real purpose of a public hearing when there is not an actual resolution, policy, or legislation currently being proposed by City Council for which it seeks public input? I would suggest that the real reason behind this meeting is for the city council members aligned with the Republican Party. Yes, I know that the city council is supposed to be nonpartisan, but I'm afraid that ship has sailed, and your quid pro quo is being paid for tonight. A week ago, the Stanford Republican Committee posted on their Facebook page the following call to action. Less than a week before the November 3rd election, this is an opportunity to show support for 2A, our president, our police, and for law and order. Let our numbers show how critical a Stanton Second Amendment sanctuary is to you, end quote. I believe that this meeting was called as a thinly veiled Republican campaign event. I would implore city council members to remember that you work for all of Stanton not just the folks who think or vote like you. The matter of gun rights and gun control belongs in the Virginia General Assembly, in the United States Congress, and in the United States Supreme Court, not in our little city. It has absolutely no teeth, the 2A Amendment, and I think constitutionally it's a nightmare for it. I urge you to do all in your power to bring our community together especially during this time of extraordinary challenges and needs. Let's all work together, all of us, all of us, together toward a vision of Stanton as a thriving, dynamic city and also an inclusive city. We don't need muskets and militias here in Stanton. We need love and understanding. And I hope that you all will hear us tonight and really just put away this ill-advised idea permanently. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Hi, uh, Daniel McCauley, 938 Selma Boulevard here in the city of Stanton. Um, first of all, you have a written statement from me through the email. Uh, I failed to sign the original one. I sent a second email noting my name and address. It says a lot. However, it probably wouldn't stand the uh, what the mayor said were the parameters of this meeting. So let me stick to the parameters of this meeting tonight. First, the Second Amendment is going nowhere. The Second Amendment is part of the first 10 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. It stands with or without the city of Stanton or any other jurisdiction in Virginia or anywhere. The Second Amendment stands. This month we had a nice little lesson in the concept of originalist thinking in relation to the Constitution. If you go to originalist thinking, I will ask, what was Stanton's involvement in the Second Amendment in the drafting of it, the passage of it? And if you can't prove that Stanton was any way involved, why are you taking this up? That's what originalist thinking uh, would say based on what we heard in the Senate hearings recently. Um, so, the, the bottom line is, the Second Amendment has also become a cottage industry in this country. There is one cottage industry that's here in the Shenandoah Valley. This council majority 
knows about that kind of cottage industry and the person behind it. This council majority knows about it because of the politics of being supported by this very person. Read my written statement, please. Um, frankly, this is a hoax and a sham public hearing, and we all should be disgraced and embarrassed for it happening here in our city. Thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. Would the caller whose number ends in 84 please state your name and full address? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey. We can hear you. Okay. This is Ingrid Blanton. I'm at 217 North Madison Street here in Stanton. Madam Mayor and members of the City Council, thank you for this opportunity to speak this evening. As you may recall, on September 10th, I came before you representing the 380 Stanton residents and business or property owners who signed a petition respectfully urging you to focus on providing leadership and taking action on matters that are under your control and that have a positive and direct impact on the day-to-day -day lives of the citizens of Stanton. We urge you not to spend time and energy at the expense of broad community goodwill on an issue over which you, the Stanton City Council, has absolutely no authority, namely the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. We urge you to leave the matter of gun rights and gun control where it belongs. As others before me have said, it belongs in the General Assembly, in the United States Congress, and in the United States Supreme Court. Yet, here we find ourselves tonight at just such a hearing, which displays a grave lack of leadership on the part of the majority of city council members. Why does it lack a display of leadership? First, because it is not prudent at all to call for a large public gathering indoors during a pandemic, which has already killed over 200,000 people. Secondly, because as a fiscal matter, it requires you to command extra city resources in order to hold such an utterly unnecessary meeting, especially given the extraordinary measures required under COVID protocols. And last, but certainly not least, as this represents perhaps the most egregious lack of judgment about what it takes to lead a community during divisive times, this meeting lacks real purpose in that there is no actual resolution, policy, or legislation currently being proposed by city council for which it seeks public input. Your memo, Madam Mayor, calling for this meeting simply states that it's about the Second Amendment. It doesn't even specify anything about Second Amendment sanctuary resolution. So in this vacuum of any real purpose, others have filled the void by creating a purpose for this meeting. As a caller before me stated, the Stanton Republican Committee statement about this meeting urges people to attend and use the Rita S. Wilson Council Chambers to hold what is essentially a presidential campaign rally. This surely did not go unnoticed by Madam Mayor and the insistence on doing this particular public hearing at this particular time suggests a certain complicity. Given the many real challenges Stanton faces stemming from COVID, as well as recent flooding events, I urge this city council to forego such obvious partisan displays in favor of real work for the benefit of all Stantonians. Thank you. Thank you. You may speak.
Yvonne Wilson, 2017 1st Street. Headline on an article published by the London Times reads, Black Militia Patrol Streets of America as U.S. Election Approaches. The article explains further, Fearing violence in the event Donald Trump won't concede, Black men are forming armed groups to protect their families. This was published on September 27, 2020. Another headline, this from Business Insider Weekly. A group called Black Guns Matter is teaching Black Americans how to use firearms. Here's an excerpt. The gun advocacy group Black Guns Matter is trying to change the debate around police violence and the safety of Black communities. Unlike most Americans who say gun control laws should be stricter, Black Guns Matter founder Maj Touré argues that safety means armed self-defense. He is advocating for Black Americans to take up arms for self-defense. While many argue that the way to prevent violence is to have fewer guns, he says the opposite. I believe that more Black people would be alive if they were armed, Torre told Business Insider Weekly. When I hear unarmed Black men, I'm sad because there should be no such thing. This article was published on July 15, 2020. Here's a doozy. The highest overall firearm sales increase comes from black men and women who show a 58.2% increase in purchases during the first six months of 2020 versus the same period last year. Philip Smith, the president of the National African American Gun Association, said that a year ago, his organization was getting maybe 10 new members a day. Now it's seeing 10 new members an hour. He said there are many factors pushing black people to buy firearms, including, and I quote, the politics right now, the pandemic and the racial tone. Those three things together act as a kind of a three headed monster that is driving folks to come to us, unquote. The majority of gun owners are white men, but in a 2017 survey by the Pew Research Center, 24% of black people reported owning a gun compared to 36% of white people. And that gap is rapidly closing. Those of you that are proponents for gun control nationally and locally, you are the same people that told us, especially black people, that there's systemic racism, cops will kill us all, Trump will put us back in chains. Police brutality is a common and widespread as rain. You told us that we have a tyrannical president, a tyrannical federal, state, and local government, and a tyrannical police force. Many of you say systemic racism is alive and kicking here in Stanton. You've instilled fear in Black America, and without realizing it, you practically threw us into the arms of the Second Amendment. You had no idea about the rise in black gun ownership, the rise of black militias, the rise of black attendance at gun ranges and gun training, the rise of black supplying for concealed carry licenses, the rise of black gun clubs, none of it. Now that you know, are you going to restrict them like Chicago does? You're gonna tell groups like the Huey P. Newton Foundation, the Black Panther Party, the NFAC militia, and other black gun advocate groups, what guns and bullets they can buy and how many they can own. Biden proposes new annual taxes on gun owners, $200 per semi-auto weapons and $200 for each magazine holding over 10 rounds. Now, which demographic is going to be the most affected by this? I think you know the answer. You sit here and you talk about systemic racism and how we minorities should be afraid of right-wingers, but yet you want to restrict how we protect ourselves because I doubt that Susie Treehugger down the street is going to have my back when cops kick down my door just because I'm black, if that's what you guys believe is going to happen. I say Stanton, city council and citizens, Use some common sense. We are in a very tense time right now and we need more self-reliance and protection more than ever. And I do agree that the council should make a decision on how we should be able to defend ourselves. Thank you for your time.
Thank you. Next caller. With the caller whose number ends in eight zero, state your name and full address. Um, yes, Ralph Cohen, 826 North Augusta Street. Uh, thank you, uh, Council, for the opportunity to speak, and I'd like to speak in opposition to a Second Amendment sanctuary resolution of any sort. I want to speak first from a practical and political point of view and just say that the Second Amendment needs no sanctuary. The Supreme Court has affirmed an individual's right to bear arms, and the conservative majority of the court is now 6-3. And as originalists, they themselves know that our founding fathers could not have had in mind the kind of assault weaponry we are beginning to see in civic places. Whether supporters of this action intend it or not, the idea of sanctuary cities is a dog whistle for the sorts of people who crowded into Michigan State House with assault rifles. But from a financial point of view, I, I think we, we really need to look at this. And I guess there are towns in America who want to attract these sorts of people. But for the economic health of Stanton, such an amendment works as a reverse dog whistle and would keep away the very people who come to visit and spend money in our beautiful city, people who care about history, art, music, theater, and fine dining, people who want to walk our streets without worrying about who's carrying what, thousands of parents who want to bring their children to our weekend of Queen City mischief and magic, for folks who want to see a show at the Black Friars, shop for toys at Puffer Belly, listen to music up and down Beverly Street, or shop in uh, at, the, at the farmer's market at the wharf, or watch the glass blowing at sunspots, or even smoke cigars like I do in the Beverly Cigar Shop store. The people who send their kids to Stewart Hall and Mary Baldwin University will hear a reverse dog whistle. This reverse dog whistle will hurt, will hurt all of us who own property, own or work in shops here, and raise our children here. In the decade after the building of the Black Friars, the outside world discovered that Stanton had a lot more to offer than Shakespeare. And in that decade, the city reported $177 million in increased revenue. My hope is that the city council will not blow away all that with this reverse dog whistle. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may speak. My name is Philip Van Cleve. I'm president of the Virginia Citizens Defense League, and I'm here representing our organization. We have 35,000 members, and um, I want to want to first of all thank you for having this hearing. Um, right now, we're living in very crazy times. We are seeing cities. Uh, with buildings being burned, cars, people being attacked, people being killed for having the wrong political view. Uh, we are seeing police being defunded. I'm not necessarily saying you're doing that to your police, hopefully not, but we're seeing that. And what you're seeing is Amer a lot of Americans now are waking up to the fact that at the end of the day, the best person to protect your life is you. And uh, the police cannot be everywhere. And they're waking up to that. It's, it's great to hear that minorities, and we've seen this, that minorities are indeed getting more involved in their right to protect their lives, as are women. Women are now the, one of the biggest growing segments of, of new gun owners. But what, what this Second Amendment sanctuary and also the re resolutions about not doing local gun control is all about is the people wanting some sanity from their government not you know, where the government will protect certain rights and will, will stand up for the, for the citizens in that locality. The Second Amendment is a basic civil right. It's not granted to us by the Constitution. It's protected from government in the Constitution. Uh, and for us uh, that really understand the importance of the Second Amendment, which has three basic purposes, the right to protect yourself, the right to protect to help protect the country if something bad happened, like Katrina, police are gone, uh, the uh, uh, National Guard was gone, so people banded together in neighborhoods to protect them, and lastly, to protect the people should the government ever become tyrannical. This was a big fear of the founding fathers, because they'd seen this over and over through the history of Europe, and it continues to today. Um, we view that Second Amendment as a canary in the coal mine. When that canary goes, there'll be nothing 
to protect us from all of our other rights going away with it. You can't have a socialist communist system with an armed populace. It doesn't work. And the fact that all these things are coming together at the same time has to give everyone pause. Now, uh, there are currently uh, 91 of the 95 counties are sanctuary counties. Uh, 16 out of 37 cities are sanctuaries and 42 out of 61 towns. If you look at a map of Virginia and you color green for a sanctuary, it's most of the map by far. There's little, little areas, uh, little pimples I call them that, that are on the map, uh, Fairfax County and so forth where uh, they don't seem to have a good grasp on basic civil rights. And th this, you do have certain powers now. And that's another thing that, again, that's why there's, there's two parts to this. Uh, the General Assembly does allow localities now to be able to make some local gun control, which does nothing for the good guys and does everything for bad guys. You take away my ability to carry somewhere, I've never committed a crime in my life. I've never been arrested. I've never had a problem. That is so typical of, uh, of in fact, if, if you look at concealed handgun permit holders, which they can measure, Permits are revoked for any reason, and that's things that don't have anything to do with crime, at 0.15 of 1% for 700,000 people that have concealed carry permits. They're just not a problem. Restricting them will help nothing. So the city does have some ability, and therefore, again, the citizens are looking for some kind of indication that shall not be infringed really does mean to this city council what it, what it means in the Constitution. Unfortunately, we have tons of infringement. And people say, well, the Supreme Court has ruled that you can do this and do that. I'll remind you that in the 1860s, the Supreme Court said that free black men would not be citizens because they could bear arms and they could vote and so forth. That's the, same, that's the Supreme Court that said that. Just because they say it doesn't really make it so. Uh, we have seen that over and over. So. I'm really hoping that the city council will, will seriously consider standing with its citizens and doing something on this to make it clear that you know you honor and respect these basic civil rights and the right to protect yourself is the most important. If you can't protect yourself, if somebody can kill you at will, then you know your other rights don't mean much if you're dead. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Mr. Rosenberg. Would the caller whose number ends in 58 please state your name and full address? This is Deborah Kushner at 1311 North Augusta. <coughs> Naming Stanton the Second Amendment Sanctuary City does not invoke a welcoming environment. The city needs tourism, and many tourists would prefer to go elsewhere if we became a sanctuary city. Stanton is a friendly place. It just won't portray us in a positive light. The sight of guns is intimidating to many, myself included. The 2A designation won't change the state constitution. The symbolism has no legal ramifications. This backlash against gun safety laws is counterproductive. Universal background checks, state storage laws, and red flag laws don't interfere with gun ownership rights. They protect those who shouldn't possess them. Virginia's Attorney General Mark Herring says 2A resolutions, quote, have no legal effect, end quote, and localities must follow gun violence prevention measures passed by the Virginia General Assembly. So the designation will have no real weight. Places with 2A designations cannot refuse to enforce public safety laws. Where this has happened because of gun rights movement, suicide rates are up. Colorado has one of the highest suicide rates in the country. Half of these are carried out with firearms. In Colorado, where sheriffs refuse to honor the state's red flag laws, nine of the 10 counties in Colorado with the highest suicide rates for the last 10 years are sanctuary cities. 22 of the state's 24 sanctuary counties where data is available, which is 92%, have suicide rates above the state average. There are real life examples of gun safety laws saving people. 
sanctuary designations interfere with law enforcement's oath to serve and protect. The tragic part of this is that the majority of responsible gun owners support gun safety measures. Instead of a knee-jerk response of my cold, dead hands, I'd appreciate a cold, hard look into how to keep gun violence statistics from rising like they are. And I'm very saddened by City Council's choice to hold a public hearing during the pandemic and the current spike in cases in Stanton. Technology exists to hold such a hearing safely. I implore Council to use technology to keep citizens safe. Thank you. Thank you. You may speak. Thank you, Mayor Oaks, members of Stanton City Council. First, I applaud you for having this exercise in democracy and free speech. You've been criticized tonight for doing uh, something that is supposed to be one of our rights. And the meeting started out with, we're here about the Second Amendment uh, the Sanctuary City. From my point of view, we're here because the previous meeting, the citizens weren't allowed their right to speak. Had things been done correctly, we probably wouldn't be having this meeting. But what happened here, what happened there was people in Stanton who had quit voting, had given up on what happens with city council, got enraged about what happened at that meeting. And that's why four of you are sitting here tonight. As a former politician, I would say to you, as a mentor said to me one day, at the end of the day, and the next morning, you're shaving or fixing your hair, look in the mirror, there's one person you have to answer to, and that's yourselves. More people voted for you than the other people because they knew where you all stood on the different issues. We could have the best speaker in the world give both sides of this story, and it's not going to matter. The national election is being decided on a big part of the gun, gun situation. There's other things that we could go into as far as the legal system and all the other things, but the bottom line is, and this is it on our side, my side, the thing is you're not trying to fix things, you're trying to change things. And that bothers people like me. If the sanctuary city thing does not get approved as leaders, you took a stand and that happens sometimes. You could get shot down but just remember that day when the election results came in, four of you, a big part of that was because citizens saw that you were going to take a different direction. Is it right or wrong? We're in a democracy, the majority won. You can still control what goes on here, but you have, you, you have a responsibility to all those people who said, go for it. First time, you were making national news, if you remember. And it's not, you know, take, take the... In the city council meeting, it's not Stanton, it's, it's not Republicans, it's not Democrats, whatever. But it's the things you were saying. And if you want to label you as a Republican, fine. If you want to label you as a Democrat, fine. But what, is you, what do you believe in? And you've given people more hope now about what's going on in Stanton. It's been here for a long time. All the criticism you've heard tonight, I could bring in somebody match every number they said. We've had people here match those numbers. We have rights as Americans. You have a responsibility. You were elected. Part of the reason was to give a Second Amendment uh, sanctuary city a chance for the citizens to speak. Not that it would pass, but you would give them the right to do it, and that's what you've done tonight. So when you go home and this is all over with, remember why you ran for this office. And when you see those people out there, they want to know that you did what you said you would do. Again, thank you so much for allowing all of us to have this opportunity. Like I've said every time, God bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Would the caller whose number ends in 92 please state your name and full address? Uh, this is Richard Baldstein, 113 Oak Terrace in Stanton. Good evening, Mayor Oak, Vice Mayor Robertson, past Mayor Dahl, and council members. Our country and our city is divided, and we need to be united. We are at war with an invisible virus that is killing our fellow citizens in unheard of numbers and is crippling our economy. 
crippling our small business owners, restaurants, and endangering the lives of our essential workers, teachers, doctors, nurses, grocery store workers, police and rescue squad workers, as well as the homeless. Our city has also been hit with two devastating floods, and solutions are urgently needed to prevent another. Our water infrastructure has an urgent need of repair of century-old pipes, the failure of which would be yet another disaster, especially now during COVID. People of color don't feel safe in this country, and the police are stressed and ill-equipped to deal with much of the unrest. So we need to be concerned about the morale of both non-white citizens and our local police. And the latest divisive issue is the possibility that seven or more of our historic buildings around the courthouse are being proposed for demolition, an issue that the four newly elected council members engineered in the secret meetings with the rest of the county, which began even before they took office in July. Those are the urgent issues you, our city council, are tasked to address. And yet, here you are bringing another divisive issue before the public about which you have no power or authority. It is obvious that this comes from the Stanton of the Republican Party and is intended as a campaign rally for Trump. Otherwise, it would not have been rushed to occur just prior to Election Day. It is well known that a so-called 2A resolution is frivolous and would not stand up in court. Further, it is not the purview of this council to determine what is or is not constitutional, but up to our state and federal lawmakers and courts. I oppose the city council even considering such a resolution. Furthermore, the Second Amendment is not nor has it been in any danger of suppressing gun rights and preventing us from owning weapons to protect ourselves. I remind you that Justice Scalia was firm in saying that the Second Amendment does not guarantee that a person has the right to own any type of weapon he or she desires, and that federal, state, and local governments can restrict open carrying of weapons in certain designated areas. I will add my name to those who will avoid going downtown or patronizing establishments if the open carry of weapons occurs in downtown Stanton. In addressing the public at the last city council meeting, Mayor Oaks, is that one of her priorities as mayor is to enhance the, eco the economy of Stanton. Councilman Clappy, when running for office, lamented that we don't have sufficient population growth. Do you really think that if it becomes known that Stanton is a two-way resolution city and people can openly carry guns downtown, that this will attract tourists and new people to move to Stanton? Will parents want to send their children to Mary Baldwin University? Such a resolution would be harmful to the economic vitality of our city. Pro 2A resolution callers frequently cite the numerous counties and small cities in our state that surround us, using that as an argument that we should join them. I will point out that none of them joined us in speaking out against the white supremacists in Charleston in 2017. That set us apart as a friendly, nonviolent, welcoming city. That's what attracts tourists and people to move here. I want to remind the newly elected members, you are not the full council. Ms. Dull, Ms. Mead, and Mr. Holmes are also newly elected council members by our citizens, and they should be equally involved in all city business. In conclusion, our country and our city is at a crossroads. We are in desperate need of unity to solve the serious problems before us. Our citizens will not be united until our council is united as one thoughtful body who may not agree on everything, but will listen to each other and listen to we, the people. I am well aware that there is animosity between some of you on the council, but we don't care. You must resolve your personal issues and work together as one body for us, the citizens of Stanton. If it weren't for COVID, I would recommend the full council be sequestered in the mountains for a weekend retreat, along with an independent conflict resolution counselor to resolve your distance. Your time is your up. Thank you. And work in harmony together for the your benefit time is up. of the city. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Let me address the council. Hello, my name is Ted Lawhorn. I live at 1002 Baylor Street in Stanton. Uh, Mayor Oaks, councilman, councilwoman. Uh, Thank you for allowing me to speak. 
Uh, first of all, um, I would like to ask the favor of everybody. I've noticed that a lot of people stood up here and, and spoken. And they, according to what I understand, we're supposed to identify ourselves and where we're from. I'd appreciate it if you would remind the folks who've been up here. I've heard two or three people up here who did not. I would appreciate if that was done. And any anything in the records that goes in the records or minutes of the meeting being spoken, that it be referred to whether they were a citizen of Stanton or council members. Yeah, we can't require that. We okay. can only request it. All right. Well, you could, I would like to have that requested. Um, and the reason I say that is I, when I read about this, and I don't like the idea of having this meeting, I had a long conversation with Ms. Darby. We had a very good conversation on the phone. I do not question, and I will not question, as I told her, I won't question your motives. Uh, a politician once said good politics is not questioning someone's motives, but their methods. So I'm not going to question your motives on any of this. The other people have stated one way or the other. What I will state is this. I'm a citizen of the city of Stanton a citizen of Virginia, and a citizen of the United States of America. I have a constitution, book with the Constitution right beside my bed. I know the Constitution. I read the Constitution. I believe in the Constitution. I have a picture of my father who was in the Navy in World War II and in the Army in the Korean War, hanging, or the both, hanging on my wall. That was one of the things he was most proud of. I have a daughter in the Air Force now and a son who's retired up there. I believe in this country. And I also believe that I've heard people up here talk of a lot of different things, we're not going to decide the Second Amendment here tonight. And you all know that. It's been back and forth for many, many years. And that's the reason we have a, a government set up that tells us exactly what to do. That's the reason we have a court system. That's the reason we have a district court. That's the reason we have federal courts. That's the reason we have a Supreme Court, which, as you all know, has been going through a lot lately here. And that's, that's the right place to argue this thing. But as a citizen of Stanton, and I, I don't, I'm going to tell you who I did vote for or not vote for, because it really doesn't matter. And that's the key. It does not matter who voted for who. What I expect of you as a citizen of Stanton is when you speak as counsel, you speak for me as a citizen of this of Stanton. You don't speak for somebody from some other city, a municipality, who argues points in here. That's fine. They can argue the Second Amendment. They can come from some other city and say what they believe in the Second Amendment. That's all well and good. I believe in the Second Amendment, and I've got guns to prove it. I've got a CCP also. And I believe that anybody with a CCP should be allowed to carry it because they've been vet. Now, we'll get rid of that because there's no, those arguments can be all day long. But from the point of a citizen of, the, of Stanton, Virginia, as city council, when you speak in one voice, you speak for me. Do not go out there and tell people that the city of Stanton allows the city council, the chief of police, the sheriff, the meter maid, or anybody else to decide what is constitutional and not constitutional and what laws they will enforce and will not enforce. I pay my taxes in this city. And if a law is sent to the city from, from the state of Virginia, you darn well better take my tax money and pay these policemen out here and enforce it. And if you can't do that, then do not call yourself councilman of Stanton. Call yourself something else. Run out here and join a party. I don't care what party it is. Join the Republicans, Independent Party, Libertarians, whatever you want to be. But on this city council, when y'all speak, speak with one voice for all of us in this town. Not just one. And I ask you to ask these people and recognize that who stands in front of you here, if they're from Stanton, those are the voices that need to matter to Stanton City Council. That's the reason it's called Stanton City Council. Not some other city, not some other town. They can tell you how many cities voted one way or the other. It has nothing to do with stamp. You've heard the comments here. You hear the comments here. That's all well and good. And if you've done what you need to do, you listen to the citizens. You listen to the citizens of this town. And you need to hear all voices. But you cannot go out here and say, we will not spend money on a wall or something like that. I don't believe in sanctuary cities in San Francisco. A sanctuary city is nothing more than anarchy. It's saying right there that we do not trust our government. And that's all well and good. Yes, back in 1776 to say we don't trust our government. But that's the problem right now. We're, we're fomenting distrust in our government and all of, our, all of its good things it does for people. And when you do that, you're just asking for trouble. Now, I appreciate you listening to me. 
and and you know, your, your time is up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next caller. With the caller whose number ends in one three, please state your name and full address. Hello. Yes, please state your name and full address. Hi, uh, I am Jesse. I live at 806 Ritchie Boulevard in Fame. Um, I just wanted to uh, take a second to address a couple of the things that have been uh, brought up about TA tonight. Um, thank you so much for giving us the time to have this hearing. I know a lot of us are upset about having the hearing at all, um, but I really appreciate Council and uh, Mayor and for having us talk about it at least. Um, to start, I really like um, when people bring up statistics. Um, I myself like economics and I like really old school statistics, kind of a boring guy, honestly. But um, when we look at the statistics, I'd like to remind anyone that likes to see the suicide rate or the homicide rate or the gun violence rate. And I think some of you minimize the fact that it's such a low percent of it happening and you forget that those, that low percent represents a person. That's a human being. So even if it's 1%, like we're seeing with this virus argument about how many people can die, that 1% is someone's grandparent. That 1% is someone's parent. That's a human being. So before you even consider talking about how firearms are safe, that's a person. A bullet costs almost no money. You can't replace a whole human being. So if you're going to bring up statistics, make sure you remember humanity is in that room with you. The second thing I want to bring up is, you know, sanctuary cities for firearms. Sounds like it leans a particular direction. I think that we all can see that this is a Republican move and, you know, par party games are party games. You know, it's an election year. I get it. But if this sanctuary city is, let's say we begin to become a sanctuary city for firearms, I'd love to see the council choose to be a sanctuary city for more constructive things. We have a lot of undocumented workers that come here for picking seasons. And so if you're so comfortable with becoming a sanctuary city, I want you to think about maybe adding more sanctuaries to this place. If it is going to stay welcoming with guns and with two-way pass and with some kind of sanctuary status, why not do it for something good? I think that um, giving people the opportunity to speak about it is one thing, but I'm worried that this is going to derail very quickly into open carry and, you know, I mean, we see a huge rise in militias right now, and I don't think that that will benefit the city in any way. I also think it's a waste of our time to do a sanctuary move that doesn't benefit us inherently. So while you're thinking about a council, I consider you think, well, if you're going to go sanctuary in one direction, maybe to the right of the spectrum, then maybe you're going to have to concede to the left a little bit. While you're making this decision, I'd also like to remind you all that meetings that are by yourselves, if there are three of you, if there are four of you, if you're doing anything privately, we're going to be watching. We're citizens here. This is not a big enough town for you to hide. So if you're going to make a decision, make it transparently. Thank you. I appreciate you guys taking out the time. Thank you. You may address the council. Madam Mayor, council members, thank you very much for having this forum and allowing the populace to come and express their concerns. Um, I heard a lot of the citizens before me quote statistics and, and give their opinions, but we all know that statistics can be skewed and twisted to fit any agenda. And opinions are like noses. Everybody has one. <laughs> but on June 29th, 1776, Virginia was starting to form. It was establishing its borders. It was trying to identify and make a decision in this new country. And it decided that it, it wasn't going to be identified as a state. It was going to be called a commonwealth for the common good of its citizens. And if there's any confusion about what that common good might be, I ask you to look no further than the motto, Sic Semper Tyus, or Tyrannius, thus ever unto tyrants. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. Thank you. Next caller. With the caller whose number ends in 99, please state your name and full address. 
Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Shauna from Stanton, Virginia. Um, coming from a family of gun owners and being a firm supporter of the Second Amendment, I am strongly opposed to Stanton becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary city. The laws that prompted these Second Amendment sanctuary city discussions are laws that ensure safe and responsible gun ownership. I would hope fellow gun owners support the law and responsible gun ownership as well. And while I am opposed to Stanton becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary city, I do have a few suggestions um, in the very misleading mail I sent on behalf of recently elected members of council. It wrongly stated their opinions violated our First Amendment rights by not having this meeting. So might I suggest, given your apparent concern, that you hold a meeting to make Stanton a First Amendment sanctuary city. And while we're at it, with the appointment of the Supreme Court judge this week, putting our rights at risk, Let's call a meeting to extend a women's reproductive rights sanctuary city and a healthcare sanctuary city, a black lives sanctuary city, and a LGBTQIA sanctuary city because those voices are just as important as the voices heard tonight. And finally, with the appeal from the county about to land on the decks, and since you claim to value the voices of Stanton citizens so much, kindly value the 4,000 signatures opposing demolishing our downtown and call a meeting to expand a historic building sanctuary city. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Madam Mayor, members of the council, my name is John Massoud, and I'm actually here today on behalf of the Strasburg Town Council to wholeheartedly urge that you pass a two-way resolution. First, and I say this only partly bragging, but it is true, Strasburg passed one of the first uh, two-way uh, amendment resolutions of a town, and I was the author of the uh, first version of that bill, something I am very proud of. In Strasburg, we passed this bill unanimously, given the fact that the town council at the time was two Tea Partiers, two moderate Republicans, two liberal Democrats, and two Bernie Bros. I never worked so hard in my life, but we got it done. We got it done by talking to each other and understanding what each other had to say. I've heard a lot of talk tonight from the uh, people who oppose this about something called unity and let's unify each other. But they very conveniently forget, neglect to remind you that among the bills they want passed are bills that would make pretty much every legal gun owner a felon. Reasonable people can disagree on a lot of issues, but when someone to make themselves feel better about themselves is trying to put me and one million of my fellow Virginians in prison. You can't unify with that. You cannot unify with that. You must not unify with that. That is not unity. That is a police state. Passing that Second Amendment resolution was the greatest moment of my adult life. The reason I say that is I can only understand that I say this at a very small degree because how the founding fathers must have felt when they uh, flipped a proverbial middle finger to King George, I felt as though I was doing the same thing to King Ralph in Richmond and to those people who are trying to put legal gun owners in jail. I personally own about 40 guns, never committed a crime in my life. And I'm here to speak to you on behalf of everyone and say, gun owners are great Americans. Please accept their right to turn the turn Stanton into a sanctuary city. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Um, do we have a caller, Mr. Rosenberg? Plenty of callers. <laughs> With the caller whose number ends in seven five. Please state your name and full address. Yes, my name is Jennifer Trapier. I reside at 14 Frontier Ridge Court here in the city. 
I must say that I am beyond frustrated that City Council has resurfaced this issue, which was addressed last year. I'm also confused and don't understand why at this hearing you are listening to people who do not reside in this city. The actions of this City Council are to relate only to the citizens of this city. Context is vital for a full understanding of any statement on any given issue. What was posted on the City Council website was not a full rendering of Article 1, the Bill of Rights, Section 13. It stopped before the completion of the statement, which reads in full, that a well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people trained to arms is the proper, natural, and safe defense of a free state. Therefore, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Semicolon. That standing armies in times of peace should be avoided as dangerous to liberty, and that in all cases, the military should be under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. Now, a few of them I'd like to address. One, we are not at war. Two, militias should be avoided as seen as dangerous to liberty. My liberty to shop and to recreate in our area is infringed upon when I am threatened with open carry weapons. Three, militias should be under the strict subordination of the civil power, that being the governor of our state. Now, the right to bear arms is protected by the Constitution of our nation, and it is protected by the Constitution of our Commonwealth. I've heard the argument that we need a militia. I've not heard why, for what purpose. We have a well-trained and well-serving police and sheriff uh, departments in our city. I've heard that the government is coming for our guns. There's been no legislation to move in that direction. The only recent legislation has been to keep guns out of the hands of those not well enough to use them rationally and safely. And this has been supported by over 80% of Americans who believe in sensible gun laws. To give credence to the fear mongers who are espousing that the constitution of this commonwealth and of the nation are in jeopardy is to tear at the sense of safety in our community and create division. We can and have for decades coexisted well with people who believe it is important to own guns and those who believe it poses an unnecessary danger to their family's safety and choose not to own guns. To encourage information of an armed organization in our area will increase fear and I'm afraid will divide us further and thus will weaken our community, making it unsafe for all. I am firmly opposed to this proposed amendment. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council from the podium? Oh, feel free. Thank you. My name is Rick Laughlin. I live in, on 37 Markles Lane in Stanton. And I apologize for having to use this. I didn't intend to address the council. <laughs> I've heard quite a few things here. Full disclosure, I'm a concealed carry instructor, and I've trained probably over a 1,000 people in the past couple of years for concealed carry permits and say firearm use. To my knowledge, not one of those people has committed a crime, period. If you, if you look at the statistics, you will find that concealed carry individuals and generally firearm owners, and there are a few bad apples in every group, but typically they are some of the most law-abiding people on the face of this earth. Why? 
because we don't want to commit something and have our guns taken away, <laughs> pure and simple, right? Um, I've heard comments tonight about assault rifles and suicides and all this sort of stuff. For 24 years, I was a firefighter paramedic in Northern Virginia, and I ran more suicides than I want to remember. A very small number of those suicides were by firearms. They were hangings, beatings, slash wrists, carbon monoxide, jumping off overpasses. Uh, if, if someone wants to hurt themselves, they're going to do it. And as far as assault rifles, an assault rifle is not a civilian-owned firearm, pure and simple. An assault rifle term is basically a term that was made up by anti-gun people because something looked scary and that sounded like a good thing to call it. Civilians don't have assault rifles. As a matter of fact, uh, the AR-15 that everybody rails about so much is less powerful than the 30 6 which I remember going deer hunting with when I was seven years old. So that's it's quite a bit, uh, quite a while ago there. Um, the uh, As far as personal protection, there's an old adage that says, when seconds count, police are minutes away. And that's not a slam against the police. The police in this area do a fine job. And God bless them. I'm glad we have them, and I hope they don't get hamstrung like a lot of the other departments have. But the bottom line is, a, a typically, and I think if you check with officers, they will tell you that most of the time, they get there after the fact, after the crime has been committed not in time to prevent the crime, unless they just happen to be somewhere where they witness it. And if I've got my family uh, or, or even another human life involved, I don't want to wait 15 minutes for help to arrive. Um, and I, I just don't want to do that. So anyway, bottom line, I go on and on, and I apologize for rambling here, but Second Amendment is a useful amendment to the Constitution. Please don't make a bunch of law-abiding people that love their country and want to protect their families into felons or criminals by default. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next caller on Zoom. Would the caller whose number ends in 13 please state your name and full address? My name is Dr. Tom Arbaugh. I live at 15 Forest Lane here in Stanton. Um, first of all, I'm very concerned with holding a hearing with a large crowd during this time. I think that's uh, not a good idea. Secondly, my partner and I are very concerned about the Second Amendment in a sanctuary city. We don't think that the Second Amendment is at all in danger and we really need more gun regulation, but we need our city council to be looking at things like mental health issues, how to address that, how to support our police force by training, and how to look at the courthouse so that our downtown is not destroyed, and how we can keep a safe city. I don't think we need people from Strasburg saying that every legal gun owner will be a felon, we have a Second Amendment firmly in place. And I also want our four representatives, newly elected, to represent me as a person who is strongly opposed to this sanctuary city for guns. I remember talking to the vice mayor who told me that we don't need to be a sanctuary city for immigration nor guns. And I would like him to hold firm to that campaign conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council from the podium? Oh, yeah, feel free. Thank you, council members. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm a resident of Stanton. I live right here downtown, work, pay taxes. And I'm uh, opposed to this potential resolution, um, mainly on the grounds that uh, it raises questions about what is behind it. Um, I agree with other speakers that have talked about how the Second Amendment is not 
uh, going anywhere, and especially with a conservative uh, Supreme Court, it's going to stay firmly put in place for a long time, as it should. Um, it doesn't seem to me that there's a need to call any American city or township a sanctuary city for guns because every town and city in America is a sanctuary city for guns. We have a culture, even though there are some people with strong opinions about guns, we have a culture that embraces the gun to the point where it's a part of our uh, daily national entertainment. Uh, we give kids guns as presents. They're in our movies and TV, and we all enjoy them and appreciate uh, their respectful and legal use in times of defense. And I come from, like many of us, families that have veterans. I come from a law enforcement family. I don't hate cops. I love our law enforcement. And I think that the problems that we see nationally tend to be department by department related. Our department here is a wonderful law enforcement department. From what I've been able to tell, I'm a relatively new resident. But, um, you know, <clears throat> when I was little, there was this movie called Red Dawn, and part of the propaganda of this Hollywood movie, as entertaining as it was, was this idea that uh, Russia and Cuba and other allies were going to sort of march down our street and oppress us. That's nowhere in likely to happen anytime soon. And we all know that. Uh, no one is coming to take our guns away. That doesn't mean that gun supporters have an invalid concern. Right? And I had not known until I came to the meeting tonight that there was a previous attempt to bring this issue forward that apparently was rejected by some previous iteration of the council. And I agree with people that have spoken that uh, citizens have the right to bring forward their concerns, right, regardless of the nature of it. And, and so in part, if this hearing or meeting is designed in part to address that wrong, then I'm in support of the fact that we're gathering, even in this time, in order to let citizens be heard. But uh, there is no legislation that is currently being proposed that is the center of this discussion. And so I think that that makes this discussion really problematic, that we're not coming together democratically to debate a particular legislation. Um, our guns are, are generally pretty safe. I know plenty of people of all races who love and use guns and use them legally and lawfully and safely. So I will just say this in closing that it makes me wonder if there are two kinds of conversations, one that is a constitutional conversation and the other that is a different kind of constitutional, I mean, different kind of conversation about the kind of citizens uh, people are willing to accept or not accept. Because when I'm on survivalist forums online and uh, and I enjoy that sort of thing, and I enjoy websites and forums that talk about new technology, and inevitably there's a crossover with gun talk. Uh, I hear a lot of racist comments, and the thing that is interesting is that those comments generally aren't challenged, right, among the gun-supporting groups. So I would just raise that rhetorical question, as patriots, why wouldn't that language be challenged? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. We're going to take a caller from Zoom. With the caller whose number ends in 05, please state your name and full address. Hey, good evening. This is Shannon Ann Harrington. I live on Beverly Street in Stanton, Virginia. Um, thanks for taking my call and for creating that opportunity for folks to stay home and stay safe and still speak out and uh, chime in. So I just wanted to read a letter that I sent out and I'd like to thank um, Ms. Dell and Mr. Holmes for responding um, as they have to my, my previous letters. Um, always good to kind of engage the others. I guess I'm still waiting, but um, so here it is. I just want to take a moment to express my feelings about the 2A fiasco that is happening in our town. I'd like to also agree with the caller that there is no reason at all for council to be soliciting or entertaining non-citizens peddling hyperbole. Um, to be clear out of the gate to my non-local friends all over the country, this looks like an actual farce, like a comedy. It's a joke. 
it looks ludicrous to even be entertaining this thread of conversation. Um, I'm a local business and property owner. I'm a gun owner. I have my concealed carry permit. Uh, to be clear, I carry a gun with me much of the time. I am comfortable with this. I'm not against weapons. Um, in addition to the firearm that I normally carry, I have other guns. And um, my family is from Montana. So uh, I grew up in the 70s and I spent a lot of time in places where people were very open about carrying their weapons. It was super normal to see shotguns in the window rack of a truck and folks with holsters and firearms in public too. I'm not nervous about these kinds of things. Um, I also agree with the caller that states that it's a given that protecting ourselves is our responsibility. Um, the police show up after the fact and taking care of ourselves in real time is a right and responsibility. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing to um, <clears throat> keep in mind that, you know, it, it is important that we are all responsible for our safety, for our own safety and, and the idea that police will show up to protect us in the middle of whatever crime is happening is probably not reasonable. Um, that being said, I would be surprised if any of these folks that I spoke about that, you know, from my childhood would call what's happening in City Hall tonight responsible. Um, it's ludicrous. It appears very dangerous. And it actually smacks of fake cowboys and wannabes. Um, real cowboys would be shaking their heads with this display of silliness, in particular in the middle of a pandemic. Gathering right now, we all know, is not a good idea. So. Um, I will cut to the chase and say that if this is not the dumbest piece of theater this side of La La Land, I actually don't know what is. Um, dying on this hill of an illegal proposition makes us look super ignorant. Because as Eric Current explained in a well-written post maybe six months ago, this whole flow has no teeth. This is not even a legally possible thing to do. It is theater. It makes folks look like we are really checked out because it's unenforceable anyway. It is not productive. It is legally fruitless. But what it does do is open the door to extremely subjective policing, and I am not okay with this at all. Let me say that I've had several first responder friends, and when I was a whitewater raft guide in Richmond, uh, I paddled with lots of first responders. Almost all of them would share that they are under an extreme amount of stress. They get calls because someone's ice cream cone melted, they get calls because someone can't open the top of their pickle jar, and they also get very real calls, mental health calls, robberies, actual crimes. Some of these are trivial. Uh, many of them are actually not in the police department's wheelhouse of keeping the peace and require years of special training in the real world. Officers are often asked to do calls for which they are not as well trained as specialists, and this is super stressful, understandably. But police are expected to pull it all off perfectly. I get it, it's a lot. Police have had a lot lobbed onto their job description over the course of time and it is a lot of pressure. And people with a lot of pressure make mistakes and this is human nature. We have to spec for that in the systemic equation. Folded into the overall macro to ignore this is to ignore the math of the margins for error. Uh, margins that have been getting lots of deserved publicity as of late, finally. I want to stress that I am extremely concerned that if this law of selective enforcement is validated, then folks who do not look like me, a white woman, uh, will be criminalized when I would not be. This is really serious, y'all. And it's also not an accusation, but we are all human. We all have implicit biases, all of us. And this is a high stakes game to have a person Thank with you. a burden of too much on their plate already making a split second decision may address that may council. harm marginalized folks. Thank you. You may address the council. Hello, my name is Pam and I live at 145 North Walter Street here in Stanton. And first I wanted to take exception to the gentleman that was from out of town that was disrespectful to our governor. Um, so I just wanted to make that comment. Uh, we are the city of Stanton. We obey the Constitution of the United States of America and the laws of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Shouldn't only Stanton residents be here to speak? I'm very confused why others cannot can speak. Uh, I am disappointed in our city council for taking time to address becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary. Just last week, a speaker in this room stated that you all love this city. Well, act like it. 
we have been a friendly, welcoming, and all-inclusive community. That's one of the reasons we're so famous besides our beautiful buildings. Why do you want to tarnish our reputation with this issue? Do you want to alienate and turn away tourists and potential new residents? Please do not be bullied into turning our fair city into a Second Amendment sanctuary. I've been reminded by these words of wisdom, all that is necessary for evil to exist is for good people to do nothing. And that's why I came here tonight. I've never not felt welcome walking in this building when I walked in and all there were were people that were for this sanctuary amendment. They all looked at me like, oh, they could tell that I was not for it. But anyway, please do not become a sanctuary city for the Second Amendment. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, we're gonna take a caller from Zoom. Would the caller whose number ends in 79 please state your name and full address? Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Aaron Barmer, uh, Stanton, Virginia, 244-01. Since everybody likes history tonight, uh, let's just do this a little bit more. Some citations. All right. You ready? All right. Glad I have your attention. Thank you all for being there. Here we go. The Malford Act. The Malford Act was a 1967 California bill that repealed a law allowing public carrying of loaded firearms. Named after Republican Assemblyman Don Mulford and signed into law by then Governor of California, Dolph Boy, Ronald Reagan, the bill was crafted with the goal of disarming members of the Black Panther Party. Odd uh, that a previous speaker didn't mention that. Who were lawfully conducting armed patrols of Oakland neighborhoods in what would later be termed cop watching. They garnered national attention after Black Panthers members bearing arms marched upon the California state capitol to protest the bill. Assembly Bill 1591 was introduced by Don Mulford from Oakland, he was a Republican, on April 5, 1967, and subsequently co-sponsored by John T. Knox, a Democrat from Richmond, Walter J. Carradian, all right, a bunch of people did it, it was bipartisan. Uh, the bill uh, was made an urgency statute under their Title IV of the Constitution of California after, quote, an organized band of men armed with loaded firearms, and there's an ellipsis, entered the Capitol on May 2nd, 1967. As such, it required a two-thirds majority in each house. It passed the assembly, controlled by Democrats, 42 to 38. Okay. Ronald Reagan signed that into law in 1967. The law banned the carrying of loaded weapons in public. Weird that the gun crowd doesn't mention that this is part of the process for them. Y'all own what guns for yourself. Maybe some of you, if you read history about guns, they probably do. Uh, probably you have heard of Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. Here's an article from 2019. Lies liberal tell, liberals tell themselves about the Second Amendment. You have heard it said by many liberals and even progressives that the Second Amendment centers on arming militias in a post-colonial America. But the reality behind the legal statute that enshrines gun rights in the Constitution is more nuanced and far more sinister. As Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz notes in her book, Loaded, A Disarming History of the Second Amendment, the arming of state militias, which ultimately became the National Guard, was already noted elsewhere in the Constitution, so why was there a need to stipulate the right to bear arms in the Bill of Rights, which pertained to individuals? That's because, according to Dunbar Ortiz, the Second Amendment can be traced directly back to settler colonialism. Basically, the Second Amendment is about killing Indians, taking their land, and increasingly slave patrols. You can find the rest of that article at sheerpost.com. That's S C H E E R P O S T dot com. Educate yourself, city council members, please. Uh, last thing I'm going to say is I am heartened by the outpouring of public comment, even though it must be just about wearing city staff all the way out. Um, hire more black and brown people at every level in the city. Uh, let Mr. Rosenberg and Ms. Simmons go home and get some sleep. Y'all corny with this whole 2A amendment. How is it that the most heavily armed people are nonetheless the most 
Muggler gang of snowflakes I have ever heard of. Kind of weird that next to none, if any, of the shoot no matter who crowd come with well in your facts. I wonder what the uh, bill is going to run up to for having this event tonight. We go find out. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council at the podium? Hi, welcome. Uh, good evening. My name is Matt Fitzgerald. I live at 261 Farnrose Avenue. <clears throat> um, I want to thank each and every one of you for uh, agreeing to hold this hearing. I can tell you that uh, uh, it's important to a great many of us citizens of Stanton. Uh, we do feel loved and cared for when you take us up on such matters such as these. And I can tell you that uh, when the General Assembly uh, was putting their list of bills together last year and it precipitated this movement, um, the, the silence from council on this matter was, um, uh, well, it, it, it felt almost the very opposite of that, felt very ignored, felt very not cared for. So uh, I can assure you that there are a great many of us who do feel very appreciative that you guys are doing this tonight. So thank you. Um, I'm going to reinforce a couple other points made tonight. Um, one is that uh, over the course, uh, since we're having this hearing now, we've seen how this has kind of run its course throughout the Commonwealth. There are over 130 counties, cities, and towns um, that all, over 90% of the 95 percent of the jurisdictions in, in the Commonwealth that have adopted resolutions such as um, such as these and. Uh, uh, they didn't do it for for any, re, you know, just random reason. They saw what the General Assembly was doing and then continued to act upon when they, you know, the, the, the bills that got thrown out in committee, you can bet will be back next year. And uh, some of them may go through. The ones that did pass are concerning enough, specifically House Bill 421 that passed and is now law of the land now, which gives this body the ability to, uh, enact uh, gun control measures within the city limits um, in a way that's, at least from my understanding, is very undefined, uh, very loosely interpreted, uh, which as a concealed carry holder um, worries me that, you know, if I can't walk on a public street or a public, if, if the council enacts law that says you can't walk in a park or can't walk down the road with a gun, that Kind of renders a concealed carry permit useless in, in the city of Stanton. Um, and then to be able to say, well, you know, if I can't use it in Stanton, but then another jurisdiction passes a similar action, you don't know if you're a concealed carry holder where you can carry uh, unless you go and look up online, if you're traveling across state, where you can carry and where you can't. Um, I think that's, that to me uh, alone makes these types of resolutions so critical to consider because what's being passed Richmond is not thought through, it's not for, it's just bad law. So um, I just ask you to please um, consider a resolution that has teeth, that will protect the, the, the citizens of Stanton. And um, once again, thank you for, for your time and all this. Thank you. All right, next caller on Zoom. Would the caller whose number ends in 99 please state your name and full address? Uh, yes, my name is Beth Daisy and I'm at 17 Forest Lane. I am opposed to passing the, the 2A Sanctuary City Resolution. This resolution will have no strength, enforcement, or purpose in policy or law. However, it will send a message to the world about our city to which many vehemently disagree and will not feel welcome and quite possibly threatened. During the 2020 February, March and uh, council meetings, the council opened the floor so over a hundred residents could voice their opinion on the possibility of San becoming a 2A sanctuary city. The council listened for hours to the many opinions presented. After these open floor sessions, council decided to not move forward with the resolution. 
It was clearly understood approving the Second Amendment Sanctuary City Resolution did not correlate with the successful concept presented through the successful marketing of Stanton as a creative and welcoming city, which has resulted in many outstanding small city awards over the last several decades. Not to be overlooked are the genuine and heartfelt reasons hundreds of new residents have relocated here, bringing with them an entrepreneurial spirit, new growth and prosperity, diversity, new ideas to share, and a growing and deep love for our city. Let's ask a few questions. Why is this heated and opinionated issue being brought to the forefront at this particular moment when it could have been scheduled at any time? Don't we find the timing of this special session intriguing as we are on the cusp of the 2020 presidential election when emotions and opinions are running in high gear? Based on the results of the May city election, we can feel and see the partisan shift that has occurred within the council voting block. Wouldn't it be a shame and a disgrace for the citizens of Stanton if our elected city council members stopped listening to the diversity of our voices, stopped gathering different points of view from the public and from each other, stopped working together as a cohesive council to make governing decisions that are based on collective opinion, communication, and consideration. Please think about the secretive and destructive use of city council power and how quickly it has affected the even-handed governance of our city. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council? Hi, welcome. My name is John Willis, 2017 First Street. I fear a lot of what's going on here. The, the right to have your and bear arms isn't just for yourself, for the country, for the citizens. I can tell you from experience, criminals look differently if they see a gun. They're less likely to make the action. All these shootings is that ever happen is all in places where guns aren't allowed because a criminal doesn't care. And a criminal doesn't care about the regulations you, that you get them because they don't have one. There are more avenues for them to get a, a gun than a civilian doing the right thing. Yeah, I heard earlier, you know, Blacks are more getting into the guns and, and buying them. Good. They should never stopped. They've been following a party that, that's been lying to them. But it wouldn't be surprising. It's not surprising that the left side has wanted to put so many limits on guns or anything else. I mean, it's from the same founder of the Democrat Party, the same founder of the KKK. There's nothing about control. All they want. I hope you guys make the right decision. Let it be free for everybody. Make it a sanctuary. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, next caller on Zoom. Would the caller whose number ends in 95 please state your name and full address? I'm sorry, was that 95? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Lindsay Walsh and I reside on Spring Hill Road. I just wanted to review a few statistics about Virginia gun violence. In 2018, there were 674 gun-related suicides and 347 gun-related homicides. The number of gun-related suicides in Virginia has steadily increased over the last decade from 493 in 2007 to 674 in 2018. 
white men and Native American men had the highest rate of gun-related suicide between 2013 and 2017. And I just wanted us to remember um, those numbers as I share my personal story, which is that I was raised in neighboring Augusta County and now reside in Stanton, but guns were part of my life. My grandfathers both served as U.S. Marines, and many members of my family were and are hunters. Unfortunately, this access to a weapon led to my brother taking his life with a gun. He was a bright 16-year-old man, active in his school athletics and his young life group. I'm very concerned about the tone that this hearing sets, as I believe it will encourage additional violence and suicide during a very stressful time. If the newly elected, some of you by a narrow margin, city council truly cared about serving the citizens of Stanton, you would instead direct your attention to working as a bipartisan council and serve the immediate needs of your community. I urge you to instead work as a united group and address the rebuilding of our flooded businesses, as well as the preservation of our rich architectural history. The council should also be addressing concerns to make all of our black citizens and brown citizens and people of color and indigenous people feel welcome in every part of our city. You should be working to preserve the reproductive rights of women who serve the local economy in many roles. You should also be working to welcome and protect LGBTQ members of our community. And I instead encourage you to use sanctuary protections as they were intended to protect the many migrant workers that support our farms and local economy and for you to conduct business and government affairs in a way that prevents the spread of COVID. I do appreciate you all taking comments via Zoom tonight to keep some citizens safe. Stanton is a city full of wonderful people, beautiful spaces, and many opportunities. I urge you to work as adults for the best interest of your citizens, rather than addressing unnecessary divisive issues. Mayor Oaks, your reconvening of hearing this issue and calling for comments from the floor have clearly demonstrated the personal agenda we're speaking to this evening. I implore you to use your new appointment for more worthwhile and citizen beneficial endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else care to address the um, city council? All right, welcome. Well, I came here originally with a prepared speech. I am Pat St. Clair Wortman. I live at 1606 Harris Street. And I'm tossing all my notes away, basically. Most everybody here has spoken about the Constitution, the legitimacy of what we're trying, some of us, to pass and why. My life experiences are different probably than some others here. And because of that, I feel the way I do. Those of you who know me know that I'm a loving, caring individual for our community, for everyone here. Racism is not part of my life and never has been. I was raised outside of Baltimore and that was not something I tolerated or really had to deal with. So my experiences are different. I have been a single mother. I am a wife, a grandmother. And I have had the experience of having to protect myself and be concerned for my daughter and be in fear for my life. Because of that, I know what it is to have that fear. So I can understand any of you that might have a fear. I don't feel that being a 2 a sanctuary city is trying to put fear in people. Virginia, if some of you don't know, is an open carry state, not something Stanton City necessarily has to provide. There are statutes, though, that do limit where and when that can be. I would like to see a Second Amendment statuary city here. I lived not in fear anymore. I don't live in a bubble 
of a utopian life. Um, I am very practical. And because of that, when and if I would decide to purchase or have weapon or weapons of my choice, I will pursue protecting me, my family, and my neighbors, whether they agree with my stance on this or not. But I hope and pray that they never have to have it and that I will be able to give it. Thank you for having this. This issue should have been addressed many, many months ago. And it really, to be solely focused on this issue that was denied. And I thank you, Council, for at least listening to everybody, whatever their opinions are. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take the next caller from Zoom. Would the caller whose number ends in 29 please state your name and full address? Um, hi, this is Fred Blanton. I live at 200 Federal Street. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, so I am a resident of Stanton. Um, I appreciate a lot of the callers before, especially talking about things uh, of uh, constitutionality and uh, science and medicine. And I think all that's very important and I'm humbled by some of the more recent uh, callers. But I'd like to talk about some practicalities for a second uh, with respect to our town. So in 1789, when the Second Amendment was written, it's one of the smallest amendments of the 10. And, and we don't know a lot about what the forefathers thought about that, but we do know a few things. And of the 27 words of that amendment, two of those are well-regulated. So they did take an effort to put well-regulated in among those few 27 words. We also know, despite what one of the previous callers was talking about, the variety of guns, the majority of people own muskets. And then thirdly, we know that people did not live in very large towns in close proximity in those days. In fact, I looked at the populations of the largest towns in 1790, and New York City was the largest with a population of only 33,000, slightly larger than where we live here. And the 10th largest town in the country was 5,600 people. So I think it's safe to say that most people live in a very rural area. So addressing the practicality of all that, we have choices today and many people still do choose to live in rural areas where folks are still concerned about wild animals or hunting for food. And, and we have a lot of rural land for people to choose from. Yet, most of us choose to live in urban areas. In fact, the current uh, statistics are 273 million people or 80% of the country lives in urban areas by choice. Where we choose to live here in very close proximity we're living along with young families, with children. We're living with retirees and older folks, mid-career folks, and even folks with physical disabilities or challenges, all trying to live close proximity to share common services for our health, safety, education, and welfare. My own neighborhood in, near downtown is often full of small children playing in the streets. And every year in September, over 10,000 children convene uh, in wizard roads around town. I have nothing against the Second Amendment in general, but guns have no place on the streets of our town today. So I urge you to not only abandon this notion of, deal, of, of declaring stance in the Second Amendment sanctuary city, but I also urge you to exercise your new abilities as a city, thanks to the recent passing of the, by the Virginia legislature, to strongly consider adopting bans on carrying weapons in certain public spaces and events. The only mobs of people that I've experienced since moving to Stanton have been 10,000 screaming children running around in wizard robes, and they all have smiles on their faces. I don't want their parents to worry about bringing their kids here in the future because they might be worried that locals might be packing heat under our robes just in order to express our Second Amendment rights. The only weapons I want to see on the streets of Stanton at those times are wands. And I don't want them to bring their magic wands with them. I want them to wait till they get here and buy their wands from my local weapons store of choice, Copper Bellies. But in all seriousness, 
The Second Amendment has been with us since 1789, and it does not need any enhancement, especially by one of the top 20 small towns of America. Please don't try to fix what is not broken. And in the remaining minute of my time, I do have to say I'm appalled that you would allow folks who are not residents here to come and berate us and berate other areas like Fairfax County, where over a million people live, which is a significant portion of our state, and then imply that we might be equally berated if we followed Fairfax. And I especially don't need Strasburg to tell me how to fix our problems here, or even that we have problems. Strasburg has a lot of wonderful things going for it. I've been to Strasburg. I'm surprised that they can't come here and talk about all the other wonderful things about Strasburg, and that the only time they've chosen to show up is to talk about a second minute sanctuary. Again, I strongly oppose you taking any action to declare Stanton as a Second Amendment sanctuary city. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Would anyone else care to address the um, council from the podium? I'm sorry, Ms. Wilson, I cannot. Um, all right, is there anyone in the hallway? Any takers at all? Hearing none, we'll go to the next caller and from just to um, update council at the present time, we have four callers remaining in the queue. Okay, all right, well, let's take the next one then, please. With the caller whose number ends in 75, please state your name and full address. Good evening, this is John Peterson. I live at 230 Taylor Street in Stanton. And as I think uh, most of you know, I am both an attorney by training and a pastor by vocation. Uh, often those two worlds, a law and grace, collide. But in this instance, I can affirm that both law and grace demand that any request to become a so-called Second Amendment sanctuary city be denied. We are a people diverse in many ways, formed as a nation around a set of ideas and values embodied in our Constitution. From time to time, we've seen fit to amend that Constitution in order to clarify or expand upon those rights aspirations, promises, and protections by which we are all bound. None of those provisions is greater than any other. Our Constitution and all its amendments are of equal value in asserting who we are and how we are to live together. The Second Amendment, which until 2008 was interpreted by the courts to confer no individual right to bear arms, is no greater in value our common life than any of those other amendments. And like those other amendments, it is not an absolute right. It is bound by reasonable restrictions. For instance, we have freedom of speech, but it is bound by reasonable restrictions that allow citizens to express their views to you this evening in an orderly and respectful manner and limit where and when certain speech can be expressed. The government of this state likewise has the power to offer reasonable restrictions with regard to guns, restrictions which courts have concluded are constitutional. It is the courts, not us as private citizens or you as local elected officials, who are charged with determining the constitutionality of those provisions. Your responsibility, as you all know, is to follow and enforce those laws by which you are bound as local officials. Individuals are not free to choose whether or not to follow a law based upon their own assessment of the law's constitutionality, unless they're willing to suffer the penalties for violations of those laws, laws which local authorities are sworn to uphold. To allow individuals or local governments to decide which laws are to be followed and which are not based upon their own assessment of the law's constitutionality would produce anarchy across our commonwealth and community. On a more pastoral note, I come from a tradition whose scriptures call us to beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, a tradition that calls us to love one another more than we love our guns, a tradition that urges us to seek peace with all people without resorting to violence, a tradition that seeks to preserve life rather than take it. Faithful to that tradition, I believe reasonable restrictions designed to help preserve life and limit the availability and lethality of some firearms are appropriate, will pass constitutional muster, and are in the best interests of our community. 
Therefore, I urge you to say no to elevating the Second Amendment above all the other provisions of our Constitution. It is not more important than our rights to free speech or to vote or to assembly or to any of our other constitutional rights. I urge you to say no to unrestricted gun possession as a solution to the problem of violence in our society and community. And I urge you to fulfill both your constitutional duty and moral responsibility by saying no to any proposal to be a second amendment sanctuary city. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next caller. <clears throat> Would the caller whose number ends in 48 please state your name and full address? Jack Curia Lason, 241 Thorn Rose Avenue, Stanton. I own guns and I strongly oppose any so-called 2A resolution to selectively override Virginia or federal law. Of all the many things keeping me awake in 2020, Governor Northam breaking down my door in the middle of the night to seize my multiple guns is not one of them. <laughs> Maybe this fixation is just an emotional performance by people who are unhappy over the last election. If so, I understand it. And in this case, you will probably find the votes to pass it. And the only real harm will be to the city's reputation. But Virginia state law prohibits local governments from enacting ordinances or resolutions that are inconsistent with state laws and specifically prohibits local governments from regulating firearms. So hopefully you won't put the city at risk by attempting to enforce it. But what if this sets a precedent for selectively disregarding other federal or state laws? There is already a vocal national movement that advocates for exactly this, the constitutional sheriff's movement. There are a number of sheriffs in Virginia who are known to be aligned with this movement. And to quote from the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association own website, quote, the law enforcement powers held by the sheriff supersede those of any agent, officer, elected official or employee from any level of government when in the sheriff's jurisdiction. I'll let that sink in. It goes on, and I quote, the constitution makes it clear that the power of the sheriff even supersedes the powers of the president. Furthermore, a sheriff is granted the constitutional authority to check and balance all levels of government within the jurisdiction. Of course, this is nonsense, and any private citizen has every right to believe whatever they please. Flat Earth, TV studio moon landing. But once we hand local government the option to decide which state and federal laws they are obligated to enforce, it falls on us as citizens to ask precisely how far it might be willing to go. We should never forget our strength comes from our devotion to the law, as expressed by the majority. We always have the right to protest laws we believe are unjust, and the courts are where we adjudicate a law's constitutionality. But since it appears we might be headed down this road, in the interest of transparent government, I respectfully and formally request statements in the public record from city council members, the city manager's office, and the sheriff's department regarding two of the CSPOA's assertions. They're very simple questions, it should be easy to answer them. Number one, do you agree the local sheriff's power supersedes that of the President of the United States in his jurisdiction? Number two, do you agree the local sheriff has the authority to check and balance all levels of government in this jurisdiction? Hopefully it will not take long for all of you to answer no. In a man for all seasons, a play about the supremacy of the law. So Thomas More asked, what would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get after the devil? And when the last law was down and the devil turned around on you, where would you hide? The laws all being flat. This country is planted thick with laws from coast to coast. And if you cut them down, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow then? Thank you. Thank you. All right, next caller. Would the caller whose number ends in 04 please state your name and full address? Uh, good evening. My name is Tony Smith. I, my wife and I live at 219 Church Street. We moved here in 2006. And we moved 
this statement because of our huge attraction to this beautiful, livable city. I recall soon after we moved um, that Mayor Oaks uh, first ran for city council. So I addressed my comments this evening primarily to the mayor as well as the other council members. <laughs> mayor Oaks, when you and I pass each other on the street, we're a small town and you uh, seem to remember me and I remember you and I refer to you as Andrea on the street. But tonight I address you as Mayor Oaks because of the awesome responsibility you have as a leader of our fair city. And I recall when you first ran for mayor that you ran on a plank to support the arts and education and all the things that we value about living in this beautiful city. In, in supporting those lofty goals, you effectively supported the notion that Staten ought to be a city that attracts others, the queen city of the Shenandoah Valley, a community where people can move about without fear and especially without fear of recrimination from our neighbors for being holding different views and succumbing to the unfortunate circumstances we find ourselves in today, a tremendous divide in our civic politics and the sense of tribalism where <clears throat> when we disagree on fundamental ideas, we fall to recrimination and accusation and fear. I do not choose to live in a city driven by fear. I choose to live in a city that is welcoming, inclusive, and safe, and that respects the, the law. So to you, Mayor Oaks, I appeal to your sense of leadership and to the legacy that you first ran for office about, a legacy that you hold in your hands to maintain this as the beautiful, inclusive, and welcoming city that it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next caller, Mr. Rosenberg. Would the caller whose number ends in zero zero, please state your name and full address. Hi, this is Allison Cofetta. I live at 402 Farrier Court. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Okay. Um, I think what I find, one of the things I find most troubling about this evening is that I don't know what it is exactly you're considering because the call for this public meeting seems particularly vague. So all I can really urge you to do is to uphold the laws and the constitution of both the United States and the state of Virginia, which is what I believe you swore you would do when you were elected here to office in Stanton. If what you're considering is making Stanton a second amendment sanctuary, then I hope that you realize that ultimately what you're being asked to do is allow law enforcement officers to decide for themselves which laws they'll follow and which ones they won't, which not only makes their jobs more difficult, but more dangerous. We live in a democracy which is built upon a constitution, and that piece of paper is more than just a piece of paper. It's a living, breathing document, and no one amendment is more important than another. It's being challenged all the time, every day, and if the state of Virginia does pass a law that people don't like or are worried about in terms of its constitutionality, it will be challenged in court. And if the court deems it unconstitutional, it will be struck down. If we keep intact our system of checks and balances, then we keep intact the very basis of that document that you are seeking to somehow uphold in some different way. Citizens can work with their elected officials. They can lobby, they can spread education and awareness about the issues that matter to them. They can get out the vote. 
there are all sorts of legal ways to change laws. So I implore you to not make Stanton a Second Amendment sanctuary city and not make the work of your law enforcement officers more difficult or more dangerous. More importantly, I implore you to keep intact our democracy. And if there's something else that you're considering, I hope that at some point we would be made aware of that so that we can speak to that issue as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Would the caller whose number ends in 09, please state your name and full address. My name is Shay Rosa. I am a citizen of Stanton. I've been here since 2005. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. My concern is twofold here. My first concern is that my understanding is that a number of people who have presented in favor of making Stanton a Second Amendment city are not citizens of Stanton. That does not accurately represent the population of Stanton and their wishes. Secondly, my concern is that this issue has been approached before. We are not in favor of becoming a Second Amendment city. This current council has decided to reintroduce this topic in direct opposition to the majority of the city of Stanton. I oppose becoming a Second Amendment city, not only because the federal government has already imposed enough restrictions on lawful gun ownership and lawful gun usage, but also because it does make the jobs of our law enforcement much more difficult. Our law enforcement face numerous difficulties day after day. It is unconscionable to make their lives more difficult and to make them sacrifice even more to make decisions in regards to the safety of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other callers? There are. We have uh, some folks who are adding on. Um, we continue to have two more callers at this point. With the caller whose number ends in 3-8, please state your name and full address. Hi, my name is Jessica Shaner, and I live at 148 South Beverly Street in Stanton. I have been a Stanton resident for several years, and I am strongly in support of Stanton becoming a second amendment sanctuary and I'm going to tell you sort of why. Now I've lived in my house for almost nine years and three times my house has been attempted to be broken into. One of those times I was home alone. I'm a single woman and someone was trying to break in my back door right outside my bedroom and the only reason that they stopped was because I cocked my pistol and they heard that sound and they ran away. The police could not have gotten to me in time. There's no way that they could have saved me. So we need to be a second amendment, amendment sanctuary because the cops can't be everywhere all the time, every place. And it's important to protect our rights, to be able to protect ourselves. Because I know that that day I was so thankful that I was able to protect myself when there was no one there to do it. And if we're not a Second Amendment sanctuary, you know, criminals, they don't follow laws. So we have to be able to protect ourselves. It's, it's pretty much that simple. So I hope that you will adopt the amendment to be a sanctuary city. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Would the caller whose number ends in 75, please state your name and full address. Hi, uh, this is Jenny Taylor Jones. I live at 108 Canary Street. Can you hear me okay? Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Um, I'm calling in tonight. Um, I grew up in Broadway, it's just down the road. I've lived in Stanton since 2001. Um, I grew up with guns. One of my 
my best childhood memories is being able to offhand shoot a muzzle loader more accurately than my dad. It's kind of a big deal for me. I don't think that we need to be a, a 2A sanctuary. Um, being a 2A sanctuary is not going to change anything. Whether we are or are not, people who want to have guns in their homes will still be able to have guns in their homes to protect themselves, to protect their property, to protect their family. Nothing's going to change about that, whether we are a 2A sanctuary or not. So that, in that regard, this meeting is pointless. And the move to try to become a 2A sanctuary is also pointless. My next concern is that we are a thriving, thriving town with a tourism industry that was built and has been established and has been maintained for years and years and years without us changing anything about our culture that would make us a 2A sanctuary. Our culture is what draws people here. It's what makes people want to come back. It's what makes people want to move to here from far away. I've, I've seen talk with tourists on the streets who will just share that this is one of the friendliest places they've ever visited. And they love that when they walk down the streets, people make eye contact. They talk. They say hello. If they need direction, nobody who lives in Stanton is going to shoot them down. Uh, that was a terrible pun. Uh, is going to not give them directions or help them with a, with a dinner recommendation. So considering the Stanton being the thriving tourism place that it is, has become this way and people cherish the culture that we have, I hope that the city council will take into consideration that the culture that we currently have that doesn't make us a two-night sanctuary and doesn't have us putting these unnecessary sorts of labels on ourselves that are not just unnecessary but unproductive, um, I hope that council will consider that there's a, a huge impact to be made um, that would be that could possibly be very negative uh, by labeling our city as a two-way sanctuary city. So I hope that, uh, that the right decision will be made and this will not will not happen. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Okay, hearing none, I would like to indicate that. Um, Per the advice of our legal counsel, we could not turn anyone away, no matter where they were from, um, because we do not want to be accused of denying anyone their First Amendment rights. Also, the city's had several hybrid public hearings, and we appreciate everyone's patience with the city of Stanton. Uh, in addition, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in whatever form with this advertised formal public hearing on the Second Amendment with the review of a, a potential resolution for the city of Stanton. Again, thank you. And okay, we have somebody else that popped in on the, okay, go ahead. Yes, we have one one additional okay. caller with the caller whose number ends in 77. Please state your name and full address. Uh, looks like they hung up. Okay, all right. Well, with that, uh, the public hearing is closed and the meeting is adjourned.